Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. It's a little windy and it's a little chilly here in Florida tonight, but we have a breath of spring for you and it's called baseball. As tonight, the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It'll be the Minnesota Twins against the New York Yankees here at beautiful Steinbrenner Field here in Tampa, Florida. Hi everybody, Ken Singleton along with David Cohn. Well, the Yankees have been playing some very good baseball here in spring training. They're 11 and five and the bats are starting to heat up. Giancarlo Stanton has homered in the last few ball games and so is Aaron Judge who hit one yesterday in Jupiter. But now let's talk pitching. We'll look at tonight's pitching matchup which is brought to you by Fios by Verizon. Streaming is only as good as your internet so get the best internet on the 100 percent fiber optic network. Get Fios. Com. For the Yankees, it's going to be Masahiro Tanaka getting the start tonight, and a former Yankee will be on the mound for the Twins, and it's going to be Phil Hughes. So Tanaka, David, gotten off to a slow start this spring, but he was nails towards the end of last year. Well, he really was. You know, he was great in spring training last year, got off to a slow start, so maybe he can reverse that this year, but down the stretch Tanaka was great he was every bit of the ace that the Yankees need him to be especially in the postseason and obviously the key with Tanaka is down 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 with this location the splitter and slider combination can be devastating the Yankees need Tanaka this year to be who he is and keeping the ball in the ballpark is going to be a big key for Masahiro Tanaka so sit back and relax everybody we've got Yankee baseball coming up lineups first pitch baseball coming up next right here on yes. To the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event, where you can get a great deal on a Honda. By the New York Lottery, get out here and play. And by Cadillac, visit your Tri-State Cadillac dealer or CadillacTriState.com to learn more about our attractive lease and finance offers. Well, as we mentioned, a little chilly here tonight in Florida. Temperature may be getting down into the low 60s or 50s. I know back north you're wishing you had those sort of temperatures, but. Uh, it's been windy all day, and I wonder if that's going to affect the baseballs hitting the air tonight, pop-ups or fly balls. We're just about ready to get underway. Masahiro Tanaka has uh, finished his warm-up tosses, and the first batter of the ball game is going to be Byron Buxton, the speedy Byron Buxton, leading off for the Minnesota Twins. And it's time to play baseball. First pitch is dropped in there for a call and strike. The home plate umpire is Marty Foster. That was his call. Here's the numbers on Tanaka, 2017 season. 13 and 12 with a 4.74 ERA. 35 home runs allowed. Next pitch is hit on the ground foul, and Buxton is in the hole. No balls and two strikes. Let me give you a little scouting report on Masahiro Tanaka, and he did finish strong last year. He was the ace down the stretch, especially strong in postseason. And then keeping it in the ballpark, he gave up 35 home runs, we just noted. In 2016, just 22. Did Buxton chase? Yes, he did, says Foster. And Byron Buxton, three pitches, and he's gone. Let's check out the rest of the Twins' starting lineup. Their manager, Paul Molitor, made this lineup out. He's just saw Buxton. Eric Ibar, the veteran, will be at third base. Max Kepler will be in right field, followed by Kenny Vargas at first base. Robbie Grossman will be in left field. Bobby Wilson doing the catching. Nick Gordon will be at second base. Gregorio Petit will be playing shortstop. And Jordan Pacheco will be the designated hitter and he'll be batting ninth. Here is the veteran Eric Ibar. Switch hitter. Takes the first. No, he doesn't take. He swings and misses for strike one. Yankee fans might remember Ibar all those years with the Los Angeles Angels. He was their shortstop playing third base tonight. He's having a pretty good spring, hitting 375. Looked like the splitter. Another swing and a miss, and it's no balls and two strikes. And Tony Tanaka, his first outing was a little shaky. He gave up four runs on four hits in the inning in the third to the Atlanta Braves. All four hits were for extra bases. Tonight, it looks like he's getting the ball down a little better. And he got that one in the dirt. Good block by Romine, but it's a ball and two strikes on Ibar. 
It's always the first inning for any pitcher, especially a starter, and seeing Tanaka get into a pitching mode earlier, I think is a key for him. Mixing all his pitches in, and as you said, Kenny, getting the ball down tonight so far. The one-two pitch is on the way to Ibar. And hits a little chopper in front of the man. Quickly off the bat is Tanaka and will throw out Ibar for out number two. Now let's check out the Yankees on defense quickly with two down here. It's going to be Stanton left. Gardner in center tonight. McKinney in right. Drury, Torres, Wade, Austin in the infield. And Austin Romai doing the catching for Masahiro Tanaka. So quickly two up and two down. You saw Tanaka and how quickly he can bounce off the man. He's an excellent fielder. Here's a very young outfielder who's got some potential for these Minnesota Twins. Max Kepler hit 19 home runs for the Twins last year. And having a pretty good spring. First pitch is high and away for ball one. In fact, the Twins have a very strong outfield. Kepler in right, Buxton in center. Eddie Rosario in left field. He's not here. He didn't make the trip from Fort Myers. That's high and away ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Now Kepler, a great story growing up in Germany. Yeah. Major League Baseball and the, their hierarchy has talked about trying to take baseball global and growing the game overseas. This this guy is a guy you can point to right here. Max Kepler, a great story. You can have the feeling that the scout who saw him first was on vacation. <laughs> it wasn't like he was looking for players in Germany, you know. 3-0 pitch is poured in there for a call strike, and it's 3-1. and one. Kepler has speed. He's got power, and he's a solid defender in right field. The knocker's 3-1 pitch is on the way. Breaking ball drops in there for a strike neatly, and it's 3-2. So Tanaka trying to fight back from a 3-0 count. Two outs, nobody on. We're just underway, and here comes the payoff pitch to Max Kepler. And it's a little chopper foul, and the bat will continue. The Twins last year, of course, they played the Yankees in the wild card game. Took a 3-0 lead in the first inning, but couldn't hold it. The Yankees, uh, on the strength of a D.D. Gregorius home run in the bottom of the first, tied the game and went on to win by a score of 8-4. to four. 3-2 pitch, swung on it, missed strike three. So Tanaka fights back from a 3-0 cap. Picks up two strikeouts here in the first. The Yankees are coming to bat. John Carlos Stanton will be in left field. Greg Bird, the DH this, after, uh, this evening. He will be batting third. Brandon Drury, the cleanup hitter, will be at third. Tyler Austin will be the first baseman, batting fifth. Billy McKinney's had a good spring, four home runs. He'll be in right field. Austin Romine doing the catching. Ronald Torres will be the shortstop. And batting ninth at second base will be Tyler Wade for Aaron Boone. And here is the Yankees' old friend, Phil Hughes. You see on the spring so far, trying to work his way back into contention. Not sure if he's going to be a starter or reliever. Probably ticketed for the bullpen this year. Little scouting report really was a lost season for him last year. Had some shoulder issues and then his second thoracic outlet syndrome surgery, which is no joke. And as we just mentioned, you know, what is his role? And maybe back to the bullpen like he was for the Yankees in 2009. First pitch to Brett Gardner is in there for a call strike. Of course, uh, Phil Hughes known for throwing strikes. He also had the right bicep tendonitis last year to put him on the DL. Here's Gardner Spring. Pretty good. 313. And that pitch is in there for a strike, and it's 0 2. Use the former number one draft pick of the Yankees back in 2004. And as David said, uh, you know, he's worked both as a starter and a reliever for the Yankees, and it looks like that's going to be his role with the Minnesota Twins as well. Off-speed pitch, I uh, should say fastball up high for a ball, one and two. The Twins just uh, made a signing for their rotation. Lance Lynn, the former Cardinal. Uh, looks like the Twins are going to have pretty good rotation. Next pitch, check swing. Did he go? Uh, no, says Laz Diaz, who's at third base tonight. Laz sporting the spectacles at third. That used to be a no-no for umpires. They, they didn't wear glasses. They, yeah. 
Yeah, of course, a lot of the fans in the stands would offer them the glasses to wear. Two balls and two strikes on Gardner. And that is call strike three. Gardner's rung up by Marty Foster. Check out the rest of the Twins on defense. It's going to be Grossman in left. Buxton in center. Kepler in right. Ibar, Petit, Gordon, and Vargas in the infield. Bobby Wilson doing the catching for Phil Hughes. Here's John Carlos Stanton. Batting in the second spot tonight. Aaron Judge not in the lineup. Pitch to Stanton is outside ball one. Judge uh, played yesterday over in Jupiter. The Yankees uh, a loss to the Marlins, but Judge hit his first home run of the spring. And from what I understand, it was headed this way. Next pitch, good swing, and he fouled it straight back. One ball and one strike. There is Aaron, and I'll tell you, he and Stanton and Sanchez put on a show in spring training. Uh, I should say in batting practice. The wind was blowing in at that time. It's kind of calmed down right now. Swing and a miss, and it's a ball and two strikes. 90-mile-an-hour fastball from Hughes. David, you mentioned that year that Hughes had out of the bullpen in 2009. Of course, the Yankees went on to win the World Series that year, and Hughes was spectacular out of the bullpen. The one-two pitch. Off-speed pitch hit hard on the ground. It's Gordon making the throw to first base, and that's out number two. Stanton hit that on the nose. So that play goes four to three as the Twins had to shift on against Stanton. Ball makes a different sound when it hits his back. Well, yeah, you can hear it all throughout the ballpark. Right into the shift, though. And you are right about Phil Hughes. The Yankees do not win the World Series yeah. in 2009 without Phil Hughes and his contributions in the bullpen that year. Absolutely dynamite. His first dent in the bullpen, really. Here's Greg Bird trying to get it going this spring. First pitch is outside ball one. Bird hitting it 130. Sort of like doing a complete 180 from what he did last year in spring training when he hit eight home runs. But I'll tell you what, in a few weeks from now, nobody will remember what you did in spring training. Swing to miss. Looked like a cutter. And it's one and two. Bird's predecessor was in the ballpark tonight. Mark Teixeira was in uniform and uh, helping around, helping out around the field. Good to see Tex. A one-two pitch. And it's fouled back and out of play. The count will remain one and two. Yeah, the Yankees have some rotating veterans that come in mm -hmm. and out. Alfonso Soriano in, in the clubhouse as well. Well, the Yankees have some stars to draw from, don't they? There it is. Oh, I was talking to Tex before the game today. Didn't know I was on camera. <laughs> Pitch is popped right up. Here. Bobby Wilson might have a play on it. Drops the bass. The wind gets it, but he stays with it. And that will do it for the Yankees here in the half in their half of the first inning. They go one, two, three. At the end of one. No score. Veteran infielder Neil Walker to a contract, a one-year deal. And he got here right away because our Jack Curry spoke to him before the ball game. Neil, it's March 12th. It's been a crazy offseason for a lot of players to be standing here with that Yankee hat on, knowing you're the newest Yankee. What kind of emotions does that bring out for you? Uh, a lot of excitement among uh, a lot of different things. But, um, you know, at the end of the day and the end of this offseason, it was uh, I was really excited to, to know that, uh, that I was going to be coming here. So, um, you know, it's a it's a great opportunity for for this team. And, and I'm just uh, looking to play my part. Brian Cashman has told us that he has been interested in you throughout the offseason. After they were able to acquire Drury from the Diamondbacks, did you think that the opening to possibly becoming a Yankee had closed? That's, that's kind of what it seemed. And um, fortunately, things kind of circled back in, in, in this direction, and we were able to, to uh, come to an agreement. And, and, and like I said, more than, more than anything, I wanted to be on a contender this uh, in, during the season. And um, you know, going into the offseason, this was, this was at the top of the list. So I'm really happy to be here. Obviously, you were a member of the Mets last year. How does having already played in New York think help you in 2018 yeah I, th I think it's uh 
it's one of those things where, uh, you know, my first time uh, coming into uh, the, the New York Mets, it was a little daunting and something that it took getting used to from the living situation to the media to the, the fan base to uh, all the things that go along with, with New York and uh, uh, to have kind of a better idea of, of, of how things uh are is, is um, you know, a little more comforting. So, um, you know, looking forward to uh, getting things started and getting, getting in shape here for uh, for the season. Last question, Brian Cashman just said, you've played third base, you've played second base, you've played first base, but he also said with about two and a half weeks left, you've kind of got to hop on that treadmill. It's moving really quickly. How do you think you can get yourself ready for the season, and do you expect to be ready to go on opening day? Yeah, I do. I, and, and fortunately, we were, we were, I was able to attend the, the camp in Sarasota for uh, for a couple of weeks and kind of just keep things moving and, and keep the arm in shape, keep the legs in shape, and those type of things. So, um, you know, the game speed stuff is going to be the most important thing and the, and the thing that kind of always seems to come last. But uh, for the most part, I'm going to do as much as I can to, to stand in on, on bullpens and things like that and get some at-bats over the minor league side and then jump into games when I feel uh, ready. Well, Neil Walker, the newest Yankee, you just heard what he had to say about joining the ball club. Uh, Jack Curry doing the interview, and I'll tell you what, it's a veteran pickup. There's a look at Neil, and David, to show you how fast time marches on, I played with his dad in Montreal. His dad, uh, Tom Walker, better known as T-Bone back in the day, was a, a reliever, and he had a sweeping curveball. That's his son, Neil, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to Neil and find out how his dad's doing. I'm sure his dad's excited about him being the newest Yankee. That's a great point. Kind of under the radar, another father-son tandem of that are uh -huh. major league ball players. So Robbie Grossman with a double is at second with one out. Kenny Vargas uh, led the inning off with a strikeout against Tanaka. So one out and one on. Here's Bobby Wilson, veteran catcher, who's trying to become a backup here with the Minnesota Twins. Jason Castro is the number one catcher. With Minnesota, first pitch is low and away for a ball. Well, Neil Walker has always been a well above average hitter throughout his career, and had some back issues a little bit last year, but finished on a good note with Milwaukee. And to get him for that contract really is a steal for the Yankees. Yeah, former number one draft pick of the Pirates. This ball's hitting the air right field, hit pretty well. Going back is McKinney at the wall, and this one's gone. A home run for Bobby Wilson. And Minnesota jumps out two to nothing. We mentioned Wilson trying to uh, catch on as a backup catcher here in Minnesota, and that might go a long way to helping him make the team. So a strikeout followed by a double and a home run, and Minnesota has the lead. So congratulations all around in the Minnesota dugout. And that'll bring up Nick Gordon, the second baseman. Pitch is fouled off. And if you have a feeling that uh, if we're going to take a look at the home run again. Like a fastball away, a little bit up. And of course, the dimensions here at Steinbrenner Field are the same as they are in New York. And that is a porch job. Nick Gordon takes a pitch high for ball. Let's check out Tanaka's reaction. And this was the bugaboo for him last year. He's given up six hits this spring, all of them for extra bases. Four doubles and two home runs. This ball, well, there's the first single. As Nick Gordon has a base hit. So the Twins, double, home run, and single. And Nick Gordon's at first, former number one draft pick. And if he reminds you of D. Gordon, the former Miami uh, Marlin and now Seattle Mariners, there's a good reason. He's D's younger brother. And both of them are the sons of, uh, yeah, Flash Gordon. Tom Gordon, who Mariano Rivera once said he was the best setup man he ever had. Certainly one of the best curveballs I've ever seen. Yeah, he, he had a snapdragon. He really did. He was a good one for a long time. And Nick Gordon has got some talent, you know, along with a lot of these other Minnesota Twins that are young and on the come, ready to ready to establish themselves. Here's former Yankee Gregorio Petit hitting 150 this spring with a home run. In the dirt, it breaks off of Romine's glove, and Gordon's going to move down to second base on the wild pitch. No, year in and year out, Tanaka's among the league leaders because he keeps everything down and has a lot on it. Difficult pitcher to catch. This is a slider that goes down, and you can see the ricochet as Romine tries to get over there, but it's just a little too wide.
High and away for ball two. The Tanaka season last year was really the story of the home run. We, we mentioned 35 home runs given up last year as opposed to 22 in the year year before. And five of his starts, he gave up seven earned runs or more. So 36 of his 94 earned runs given up in just five of his starts. Next pitch is high for a ball to Petit. And it's three balls and no strikes. Most home runs allowed. Rick Porcello, 38. Miranda, Lackey, Tanaka, Nolasco, and Hellickson. All in the 30s. Next pitch is outside for ball four. And there are two men on with one out. You know, I'm, I'm thinking former twin Burt Blylevin gave up a lot of home. I think he gave up 50 in one year and 97 in two years. And he's in the Hall of Fame. So if, if, I bet you all 97 were solos. <laughs> one of the best curveballs in the history of the game. But, yes, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of those home runs were all fastballs. Here's Jordan Pacheco, the number nine hitter and the designated hitter for the Twins tonight. And he takes a pitch outside for ball one. Pacheco, he's a catcher by trade. This is what he did last year. He was an independent league. He was out on Long Island. Now getting a chance in the Twins organization. He has spent some time in the big leagues with the Rockies and the D-backs. Two on, one out. That is in there for a call strike. One and one. Tanaka sharp in the first inning. Not so much here in the second. You were talking about his uh, postseason pitching. He allowed just two runs in 13 innings to the Houston Astros. Pretty good hitting team. That's over the outside corner for a strike. Good slider. Yeah, in his game three against Cleveland. Yeah. That's seven scoreless innings, only three hits against seven seven strikeouts. Mm -hmm. That was actually his first career postseason win, and it came at a big spot. It turned it around for the Yankees. They were 0 2 against the Indians. Check swing. Did he go? No. Two balls and two strikes. And if I recall, after the game, through his translator, Tanaka said, we're going to win tomorrow night, and then we're going to go to Cleveland and take care of business. Now, I don't know how you say that in Japanese, but it translated to taking care of business, which the Yankees did. Two two pitch to Pacheco and it is just outside three and two. We'll look at the postseason numbers. Pretty darn good two and one but the ERA sparkling zero point nine oh. For Tanaka last year's postseason play. Runners don't go to 3 2 pitch is ball four. No, wait a minute. They check it first and they say that Pacheco went around. First base umpire, Eric Cooper rings him up. Paul Molitor does not agree. So instead of the bases loaded in one out, there's still two on and now there's two outs. Well, you be the judge. No, we already have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> To me, that's close, but I don't think he went around. And I'm a pitcher, and I, I got to agree with you. <laughs> so that will go as uh, Tanaka's fourth strikeout. And back to the top of the order, and Byron Buxton. Breaking ball hangs high for ball one. MLB.com did a recent survey about the uh, speediest teams in baseball. And uh, Buxton graded out as the fastest runner in baseball. Just a hair faster than Billy Hamilton of the Cincinnati Reds. But overall team speed, the fastest team 
in Major League Baseball the Minnesota Twins three teams tied for second and one of those teams was the New York Yankees the 2 0 pitch that is in there for a strike Tanaka having some problems finding the strike zone he's not far off but he's missing by just enough pitch number 40 already coming yeah. here in the second and, uh, you see the ratio 22 to 17 strikes to balls fouled off by Buxton and that's a departure from the first inning when Tanaka threw just 14 pitches and 10 of them were strikes. So 26 pitches this inning. Only 14 in the first. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and two on. And the count is full, three and two, and the runners will be going. We were talking about Buxton's speed. He was 29 for 30 last year in stolen base attempts. And the only time he was thrown out, it was because he overslid the bag. He would have been safe that time as well. well he makes catches in center field that other, uh -huh. other players just dream about. Yeah, translated to a gold glove. The runners go to 3 2 pitch. He squirm on it, missed strike three. So Tanaka gets out of further trouble here in the top half of the second. But the Twins break out. They lead 2-0 at the end of one and a half. MLB.tv, watch select spring training games live on your favorite supported devices. Blackouts and other restrictions apply for regular season games. Visit MLB.tv for details. Yeah, that is a... Special app that pitch is in there for a call strike. That's how I uh, scout the other teams. Well, it is amazing. You can uh -huh. watch anywhere, anyhow. Now, I mean, I'm right in the train. Just whip out your phone. Here's Brandon Drury, and he'll take a pitch in there for a call strike. Drury hitting 304 this spring. One home run that came over in Clearwater against the Phillies, and three runs batted in. So the Yankees have kind of. Uh, Remade their infield with the trade for Drury and now for Neil Walker, signing him as a free agent. Pitches hit hard on the ground and in the left field for a base hit. That 304 average is going up for Drury. He's on with a leadoff single here in the second inning. He's been impressive. He's got some power to the opposite field. And he, like uh, Neil Walker, Brian Cashman was after both of them during, during the course of the winter. Once again, Brian Cashman got his man and uh -huh. was patient in the process as well. Here's Tyler Austin. Hit a walk-off home run a few days ago against the Atlanta Braves. Also hit a home run against the Phillies in Clearwater. And he'll take a pitch for a call strike. Two home runs, four runs batted in for Austin this spring. And tonight he starts at first base. Big swing fouls it straight back and it's 0 and 2. Phil Hughes does not mess around, throws a lot of strikes. Here's a look at the, what could be the Yankees defense as they move along this season. Gardner in left, Hicks in center, Judge in right, Drury, Gregorius, Walker, Bird in the infield, Sanchez catching. And the designated hitter, John Carlos Stanton, although we could fit Stanton somewhere in the outfield and somebody else would DH that day. Next pitch to Austin is high for a ball one and two. Well, seemingly over the last six weeks, the Yankees now have incredible depth yeah. on the infield after starting spring with possibly two rookies at second and third. Now have two veterans. And all the rookies are, will provide depth and continue to get an opportunity to develop. Now back to the screen. And we as we all know the Yankees used 45 players last year. The previous few years they used over 50. So there's no no team that gets through a whole season. You know with the first 25 that just doesn't happen. 
So you, you mentioned the depth and that can pay off in the long run for the Yankees. Instead of uh, signing players and making trades and giving up prospects you just come by go down to your minor league uh, affiliates and pick somebody up to help you out for a few weeks. Yeah they really do have interchangeable parts and Drury and Neil Walker can play multiple positions along with Tyler Wade. And as you see here second and third base options. A 2 2 pitch is high ball three three and two. Yeah as we as we know David and we've been through this before. You're a young player trying to make a team and it seems like each day you remain you get more and more nervous. <laughs> Drury's not going. The 3 2 pitch on the ground to the right side. And Gordon comes up with it, ranging far to his left and throws out Austin for the out. Nice play by Nick Gordon, who the twin signed as a shortstop. So he's got some range. And he made a nice play there. Yeah, ranging and then their transition up, pop up in the throw. And he looks a lot like D, huh? He really does. And he made that play look easy, and it was yeah. not. Well, D is now the center fielder for uh, the Seattle Mariners because the uh, Mariners already have a second baseman, Robinson Cano. So when they they got him from the Marlins, they said, "Can you you're going to play center field?" Here's Billy McKinney. He's having himself a good spring. Hits the ball slowly towards second. Gordon's going to be uh, tried again, and he'll throw out McKinney for out number two on the play. Drury will move over to third base. I think McKinney has five hits this spring and four of them are home runs. Here's Austin Romine. As you can see by that uh, batting average, he's been swinging the bat well this spring. 563. Got a chance to drive in a run here, cut the Twins' lead in half. Check swing, a little outside for a ball. Romine very adept at hitting ball to the opposite field. The Twins in the outfield play him that way. Swing and a miss. Looks like he was trying to hit the ball that way, and it's one and one. David, is it me or is Buxton playing very shallow in center field? Extremely shallow, yeah. and with his speed. Why not? Already arguably the best center fielder in the game defensively. Inside for a ball and it's two and one. You know nowadays you know it used to be the eyeball test. Who's the best center fielder go back to Willie Mickey and the Duke. And <laughs> Yogi Berra used to say Joe DiMaggio never had to die because he was always there. He uh -huh. covered the ground. Nowadays you can kind of track it. And Byron Buxton makes more catches that other center fielders can never even get close to. Two and two now on Romine. Earned his first gold glove last year. Tremendous range and speed. Runner on third with two outs for the Yankees. Ball is fouled off and the count will remain two balls and two strikes. Another good crowd on hand here at Steinbrenner Field. Although on this chilly night, there's a lot of jackets and sweaters, some hoodies. Yeah, only 62 degrees. You know, the thing about here, it's a beautiful night for baseball, of course. The thing about this area, this only stays for about a couple of days. And then the wind starts coming out of the south again, and things warm up. The 2 2 pitch. High ball three. Did he go? No, says Eric Cooper. Imagine if you live in Florida year round it's kind of nice to get a little cool weather every now and then. If you're on vacation eh, not nah, so much not so much if you paid for the weather. No. Here's the three two pitch and it's lined towards right field coming on is Kepler and the right fielder makes the catch for the final out. The Yankees leave a runner here in the second inning and at the end of two the Twins lead it two to nothing.
Brought to you in part by your local Volvo dealers and by Lexus. Experience the 2018 Lexus with all-wheel drive. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealers. And all bundled up tonight. I like that uh, Yankee skull cap there. That works out. That'll do the job tonight. As the sun goes down here in uh, West Central Florida, not too far from the Gulf of Mexico, where you see brilliant sunsets. And pitch to Ibar is in there for a call strike from Masahiro Tanaka. Five strikeouts from Masahiro tonight, all swinging. High fastball, and it's a ball and a strike on the Twins' third baseman. He'll be followed by Kepler and Vargas here in the third inning. Two nothing Twins. Their runs coming on a two run home run by their catcher, Bobby Wilson. Ball hit on the ground the second. Wade comes up with it, throws the first, and quickly there's one out here in the third inning. High bar is now 0 for 2. Let's check out the Twins team scouting report presented by Geico. Well, they were, really were a remarkable story last year, and they were players this offseason. They beefed up their roster. They actually went after uh, Otani at one point, who ended up with the Angels, and were in on you, Darvish, but ended up with Zach Duke, Logan Morrison, actual former Yankee Michael Pineda, Addison Reed, Fernando Rodney, and just signed Lance Lynn, Jake Odorizzi. Puts the Kepler's hit high in the air to left field. Stanton is there and he has it for out number two. So the beefed up roster and then the expectations are there and they had a historic season last year. If you remember back in 2016 they were 59 and 103 turned it all the way around really the first team in baseball history to go from 100 plus losses in one year to qualifying for the postseason in the next year and that's pretty remarkable. Wow. What a turnaround for that guy Paul Molitor and then of course we mentioned it. The budding superstar in center field, Byron Buxton. Boy, he really turned it around in the second half. He's been a prospect. He's been a suspect. Back to a <laughs> prospect, and boy, he really, he really has a chance to be one of the great ones. Kenny Vargas takes a pitch outside for a ball. And Buxton was sent to the minor leagues a couple of times. Uh, now he seems to be getting his act together. Now he's always fast, could always play defense, but now his bat's starting to catch up. Vargas struck out his first time and he'll take a pitch in there for a strike and it's one and one. If you look at the second half of last year after the trade deadline, the Twins went 35 and 24 and scored the most runs in the American League offensively. And you wouldn't have guessed that if you no. think about it. They scored 346 runs last year after the trade deadline. And the Cubs were second, the Indians were third, the Yankees were fourth, the Cardinals were fifth, but the Twins. Mm -hmm. First in that category, offense, most runs last year in the second half. Well, they got some players they did not bring on this trip. Brian Dozier, power hitting second baseman. Joe Maurer didn't make the trip, former batting champ. Next pitch is outside for a ball. Eddie Rosario hit 27 home runs last year. He's their left fielder. All of them remained in uh, Fort Myers, which is about a two hour drive south of here. 2 2 pitch to Vargas. Hits it hard on the ground, but Austin has it. Tanaka will have a 1 2 3 inning here in the top of the third. Yankees trying to get back in it. They trail 2 0. The third inning, the Twins are on top 2 0. Ronald Torres will lead it off for the Yankees. Torres putting up some good numbers this spring, hitting 316, driven in three runs. And he'll take a pitch inside for Phil Hughes for ball one. Hughes going into his third inning of work. He's allowed the Yankees just one hit and one base run. One oh pitch, chopping to third and over third. Torres rounds first and he's going to try for two. Here comes a throw and he's in with a hustling double. Well, third baseman Eric Ibar was playing in close, guarding against the bunt, and it cost him. I guess you call that a ball to board chop, maybe? <laughs> Just high enough. The hustling Torres. 
easily in with a double. Straight down and a big hop and no hesitation. And Ronald Torres actually last year because of injuries got into 108 games, 315 at bats. Speaking of injury, there was kind of an injury scare the other day as Tyler Wade lays into one and this one's going to take a couple of hops off the wall. Torres had gone back to tag up and he's going to be waved home as the throw goes a second. The throw to the plate and he is out. And on the play, Wade will move over to third. Torres kind of misjudged that, thinking that it might be caught, and he went back to second to tag up. And that cost him a chance to score. Well, you are exactly right, Kenny, and a little bit of an overread for Torres. At this point, probably should have aborted. Phil Nevin, the third base coach, is waving him home, and he really had no chance. And heads up by Tyler Wade to go ahead and get the third base with only one out on that. So the Yankees are going to try and salvage a run here as Brett Gardner will step in. The infield's back. Twins are up by two, and the first pitch is low for ball one. Gardner was called out on strikes his first time up. So a misread by Torres. You're right, David. It should have been second and third. Nobody out. Ball's hit hard, but foul at the very least. Yes, uh, it was a mistake all the way around. Mm -hmm. On the bases and at third base on the read. Good to see Tyler Wade swing the bat after that scare the other yeah. day with him when he rolled his wrist. No, no ill effects at all. Really laced that double. Turned on it. You hated to uh, think the worst when it happened, but uh, we've seen that before. And other players uh, come back not so lucky. Pitches outside for a ball. On that play at the plate, it went 9 4 2 to throw out Torres. Wade with the lead at third. And this ball is popped up. High bar and Wilson and Wilson will make the catch for the out. So Gardner does not get the job done as he fouls out. Let's take a look at the play that the caused Tyler Wade some pain. But just his initial reaction right there. You, you can't help but think the worst when you see a player react like that right away. Quite a scare, but really dodged the bullet. You see, he's got the uh, like a guard on that wrist that to keeps him from turning the wrist over as he slides into a bag. The Giancarlo stand broken bat, little looper coming over as Vargas near the stands. He'll make the catch, and that's it. Yankees have a couple of doubles in this inning, but do not score at the end of three. It's still two nothing Minnesota. Yes, for another spring training showdown as the Yankees battle the Detroit Tigers. Our coverage begins at one with news and notes from Steinbrenner Field. Then catch all the action right here on Yes. Quick turnaround, David. Day game after a night game. Yeah, I'm going to sleep in my car in the parking lot. <laughs> Here's Robbie Grossman. He got things started for the Twins in the second inning with a booming double to the gap in right center field. And he takes the first pitch outside for ball one. On our Audi scoreboard, it's 2 0 Minnesota here in the top of the fourth. That pitch is in there for a call strike, and it's 1 and 1. For the Twins, two runs, three hits, no errors. For the Yankees, no runs, three hits, and no errors. One one pitch, and Grossman has his second hit of the ball game. Solid single in the center field. He's hit the ball hard twice. And he has half the Twins hits. Yes, he has been all over it tonight. And, you know, we mentioned with Tanaka last year, kind of the tale of two years and finished on a good note. He won five consecutive starts in April and then lost five con consecutive starts in May and just a third Yankees pitcher since 1913 to do so. Well, you know what they say, that's life. Riding high in April, shot down in May. <laughs> there it is. Here's Bobby Wilson. Hit a two-run homer. 
And he hits one hard. Good stop by Drew. He caught it on. Did he catch it on the fly? Lance Diaz says no. I'll tell you what, during the season, that would be replay. Lance Diaz said he caught it on the short hop. Now, an indication for me is Drury came up and threw over the first base right away. He didn't even think about second. This kind of tells me he caught it on the fly. And I still believe it after seeing that replay. Well, you're right. You said it, Kenny. I mean, just his reaction immediately wheeling and throwing the first for the double play. You know, that, that, was, uh, that was caught. And you're right. It would be replayed in the regular season. Hard for the third base umpire to get an angle on that. Yeah, because his back was uh, the back was turned by Drury and he couldn't see the catch. But Laz Diaz is at second. He's the one who made the call. So a runner on second with one out. That play goes five to three. And here's Nick Gordon who had a base hit. He got as far as second on a wild pitch. They want to pick off throw to second. No play. You know, I mentioned that consecutive win streak and loss streak just to finish that point. Bob Turley did it in 1955 and Bullet Joe Bush in 1924. But Tanaka is the only one to do it back to back. Win five in a row and then lose five in a row in the same season back to back. <laughs> so that's kind of the way his season went last uh, year. Did, right? Yeah. Ended up 13 and 12. Got over the 500 mark. One and oh to Nick Gordon. Hit on the ground to second for Wade from the outfield grass will throw out Gordon for out number two on the play Grossman moves over to third. It's one of those stats that only the Yankees can, can do right you see there and the first 14 starts to illustrate the point we just made. The last 16 boy. Like two different pitchers like half the man I used to be right. <laughs> or twice the man I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Bullet Joe Bush, 1924. Wow, wow. The Yankees are one of the franchises you could you could come up with stuff like that with. <laughs> of course, that was pre yes. Here's Gregorio Petit, and he goes around too far on a pitch out of the strike zone, and it's strike one. Petit drew a walk in the second inning. Played with the Yankees in 2015, appeared in 15 games. Been around the block, the A's, the Astros, the Yankees, and the Angels. Another off speed pitch and another swing and a miss, and it's 0 2. Tanaka's pitch count up to 59. As the pitchers are going deeper and deeper in the ball games, building up those arms and pitch counts. A 0 2 pitch. Swung on and missed or foul tipped into the glove. And Tanaka picks up another strikeout. That's his sixth of the game. But the Yankees trail by two. As the Yankees hit in the bottom of the fourth inning. Greg Bird is going to lead it off. Our Audi scoreboard has the Twins on top, 2 0, courtesy of the two run home run from their catcher, Bobby Wilson. Phil Yu's still in there. He'll get Bird, Drury, and Austin here in the fourth. As the Yankees try and put a crooked number up on the scoreboard, uses pitch count at 40. And here's the first pitch at the bottom of fourth inning. Greg Bird takes a curveball in there for a call strike. Twins rotation. All right handed. Next pitch hit on the ground foul. Urban Santana had finger surgery. He won't be back till late April early May. He was their ace last year. Jake Odorizzi now with the Twins. Jose Barrios. Young right hander Kyle Gibson and Lance Lynn. So you're right David Phil Hughes might be headed back to the bullpen. That fastball is upstairs and it's a ball and two strikes. Now Phil Hughes has got 11 years in the big leagues and still just 31 years old. It's hard to hard to believe he was only 21 when he broke in with the Yankees in 07. That pitch is called strike three. Bird is caught looking. 
That is the second strikeout on the night for Phil Hughes. Both call strike threes. Here we go. 2004 first round draft pick of the Yankees 23rd overall from California. 56 and 50 seven seasons. And 2009 world champion 1.40. That's what you were talking about. ERA as a reliever. And an all star when he went 18 and 8. Well, he really stabilized the bullpen in 2009 for the Yankees and was a big reason why they won that world championship in the first year of the new Yankee Stadium. Drew hits the ground ball to short. Easy hop for Petit who throws low, but Vargas has it, and there's two outs. So two up and two down for the Yankees here in the fourth inning. Going to bring up Tyler Austin. Austin was thrown out on a nice play by Nick Gordon at second base. And Phil Hughes has been impressive here tonight. A different style for Hughes and mixing all of his pitches. Lots of change ups, curveballs. And hitting the corners as well, like he did with that pitch. Fastball over the corner for a call strike. There is the, the new pitching coach for the Minnesota Twins, Garvin Alston. This ball is hit well to center field. Buxton going back. Still going back. This one is gone. A home run for Tyler Austin. And it's now a two to one ball game. That ball was drilled. Austin's third home run of the spring. And all of them in about that same area. No cheapies out there. As Tyler Austin shows you the type of pop that he has. Another look. <laughs> the crack in the back should tell you that the Buxton's not going to catch this one. Here's Billy McKinney who swings and misses, and it's 0 and 2 on the Yankee right fielder. So Tyler Austin showing some power here at Steinbrenner Field. Gets congratulations from Aaron Judge, who shows power everywhere. That pitch is high for a ball, and it's one and two. McKinney grounded out to second his first time. Ball's hit on the ground to the right side, but it's foul. Well, the Yankees break through on the scoreboard here in the bottom of the fourth. If it's one team that's given the Minnesota Twins problems, it's been the New York Yankees. The last 10 seasons, the Yankees are 50 and 21 against Minnesota. The 1 2 pitch just missed the inside corner. Count levels off at 2 and 2. And postseason as well. Yeah, post I didn't even get to that. <laughs> the Yankees have knocked them out several times. Including last year. McKinney steps out. Hughes uh, took his time getting the sign from Wilson. Wilson said, well, let's do it all over again. Now he's ready. 2 2 pitch. High ball three. Count is now full. Three and two. Well, there's definitely a sense of urgency with this. This uh, Twins organization now, and you, you saw it in the offseason. We mentioned all the additions, the beefed up roster, and they were players on just about every big free agent. Really took a shot at you, Darvish. Here's the 3 2 pitch to McKinney. Swung on in, missed, strike three as Hughes picks up his second strike out of the inning, but he gives up a long home run to Tyler Austin. This is destined for faraway places, and when it lands, it's a two to one ball game. Well, it's a two to one ball game. Uh, the Twins on top, but barely. And joining us here in the fifth inning, as he usually does, uh, manager Aaron Boone. Thanks for being with us, Aaron. Hey, guys. A little chilly tonight. Yeah, it is. I noticed uh, a lot of jackets. You look around the stands, and the fans are all bundled up as well. This, uh, and you know what? You, you take this on opening day. 
Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, in New York, <laughs> that's true. Yep. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the signing of Neil Walker to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, excited to add him to the group. Um, obviously, a really good hitter um, throughout his career. And, uh, you know, just with the market the way it was this winter, just got to a point where we really couldn't pass it up. And we, we think he brings, a, obviously, a, a professional hitter, but also some versatility with the ability to play first, the ability to play second. We'll get him in some games at third. Um, so we're, we're really excited and, and feel like we've really added flexibility and a pro to our roster. You know, I mentioned how time marches on. I actually played with his dad. His dad, <laughs> his dad was... Uh, Pitcher in Montreal when I was there. I don't know if you remember Tom Walker. Absolutely. That uh, pitch is fouled back. And Jordan Pacheco leading off against the Yankees' new pitcher, Dylan Batances. What did you think of Tanaka tonight? I thought he was good. Um, yeah. I thought I thought he threw some good splits. I thought the fastball was pretty crisp. He got in a little trouble, obviously, in that second inning. I um, think the wind might have helped that ball a little bit out. Um, probably a situation where normally. He may go to a split or something there, but I thought all in all, I, I, I thought a good night's work and uh, got him up, I think, at 60 or just above 60 pitches. So another positive step forward for, for Masahiro. Uh, we saw the power of Austin, but you're starting to see the power of the likes of Stanton and Judge. Uh, you know, we weren't in Jupiter yesterday, but from what I understand, Judge hit a bomb. He, he did, and, and you know, I, I think he actually just missed it, and it still <laughs> went on the walkway out in, out, out in Jupiter there on their offices up there. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's, his work has been really good. His Aaron, talking about Aaron, and his, his timing's getting better and better, and, uh, you know, yesterday was his first back-to-back -back game, so that was a positive step, and, and Giancarlo squared up a number of balls already this spring. Speaking of a positive step, a strikeout for Batances, the first hitter he faces, Pacheco's down, and now back to the top of the order. You know, we're about uh, 17 days to the start of the regular season. How do you, how do you feel things have gone to this point? I, you know what? I think really well. I think... Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the work of our starting pitchers. I think they're in a good place, um, you know, with all their sides, their sim games, the work they've gotten in games have been good. Um, you know, our bullpen, uh, knock on woods, woods healthy and, and getting the proper work in. And, and I think the roster is starting to shake out. And, and here these last couple of weeks now, we'll really start to build up our regulars and you'll start to see them obviously going more back to back games deeper into games and, and start to see more of our team really start to take shape here. Yeah Aaron you know I obviously looking at the bench you know nowadays obviously the rosters are you know, geared towards the extra guys in the bullpen. You've got so many options now Adam Lynn you know Tyler Wade to Reyes you know how do you, how do you see the bench shaking down would you see a guy like Wade would you rather see him play every day in triple A or is he in the running. For like a super utility role. Oh no, I would say Tyler Wade's very much not in not only for the utility role. I would say to to be our second baseman. Uh, you know, I don't think the the signing of of Neil Walker doesn't change where how we look at 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 Tyler. Um, we think he's shown really well. We think he brings an element to our team that's special. We think just adding Neil to the mix just gives us better matchup capabilities on a nightly basis. But Tyler Wade is very much in that mix. Well, Batances is showing well tonight. Faces two hitters and strikes them both out. And Aaron, we want to thank you as we go to commercial. Thanks, and, guys. Uh, keep the line moving. Yes. Take care. Appearance of the spring, and you could see thus far he's been excellent. Four innings, two hits, one walk, four strikeouts. And opponents are hitting 143. The young man from Las Vegas, Nevada. And you can bet up that you will see some uh, split changes. As he'll face Eric Guybar. Switch hitting infielder playing third base tonight. He was struck out. I should say grounded out twice. Then he'll take a pitch for ball one. Yeah, Chase and Shreve, not your prototypical left handed reliever. Because of that split change, he's not a you know not a guy that's going to go a lot of sliders against left-handed batters, but he's missed a lot of bats. He can he can strike guys out. His numbers speak for themselves. And when he spots his fastball, it sets everything up like any pitcher. We should mention the excellent outing by uh, Dylan Batances. Two hitters, two strikeouts. Very sharp and throwing strikes right away out of the bullpen. You can almost tell with Dylan right yeah. away, you know whether he's on or not. 
It's a, a good sign for, for Batances. Well, the wind that was really ripping earlier in the day is kind of calming down a bit as we move further into the evening. You look out at the flags at center field. That pitch is in there for a strike, and it's two and two. Should should note also with regard to Chase and Shreve that he is out of options. So, mm. you know, he's either on this team or he he probably would not get through waivers, as another team would take a chance on him probably. There's a split change, but not close enough to the strike zone to get Ibar to chase it. So Shreve will be faced with a payoff pitch. Now once a young pitcher is out of options, uh, you cannot send him back to AAA without clearing waivers. That's the position that Shreve is in. 3 2 pitch is hit hard, but short hop caught by Austin. Steps on the bag, and the Twins go easily here in the top of the fifth. It's a two to one ball game. Yes, the Brooklyn Nets clash with DeMar DeRozan and the red hot Toronto Raptors. Coverage tips off at seven. Watch the Nets on Yes and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. The Raptors are currently the top team in the Eastern Conference. Dwayne Casey has them on the move. Very entertaining basketball team. Here's a look at the uh, flags atop the stadium here at uh, Steinbrenner Field. New pitcher is Ryan Presley. This will be his fifth appearance of the spring. Six strikeouts in four and a third innings. That's impressive. Austin Romine will lead it off for the Yankees here in their half of the fifth inning. And a breaking ball drops in there for a call strike. Romine, Torres, and Wade for the Yankees here in the fifth. Sharp breaking ball, and that's swung on to miss strike two. Good outing for Phil Hughes, allowing just one run in four innings, the home run to Tyler Austin. They have four hits. Three strikeouts, and as usual, he didn't walk anybody. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Check swing, foul back. Yeah, he looked good against uh -huh. uh, you know a, a representative Yankee lineup here, as, it, as usually is the case when visiting teams go to the home ballpark. And, you know, Judge not in the lineup, but you know, solid outing from Phil Hughes. Now Ryan Presley on to do the pitching for Minnesota. 0 2 pitch, a little chopper over the bag. Gordon slips as he throws, and Austin beats it out. Well, that was a groin injury waiting to happen. Gordon tried to set himself and uh, lost his footing. It's exactly right, as you see. Just, not, just couldn't get his legs behind that throw. So an infield single for Austin Romai. That'll bring up Ronald Torres. Torres had a double his first time up. Eventually was thrown out at home plate. Kind of a miscue on the bases. Swinging him in, strike one. And we talked about the, the Twins revamping their starting staff. They also revamped their bullpen. So Addison Reed coming over as a setup man. And Fernando Rodney, the age, ageless. Fernando Rodney now 49 41 years old 49 wow no he had 39 saves last year little chopper towards second steps on the back for one on the first and there's your double play Petit turns it over and Torres to a 6 3 double play and now two outs and nobody on and here's Tyler Wade. He laced the double off the right field corner. Off the wall in the right field corner. Jumped on the first pitch. Presley starts him with a hook and drops it in there for a strike. I thought Aaron Boone was very forthright, you know, when we yeah. posed that question to him about Tyler Wade, said, no, no, no. He's 
still very much in the mix to be the starting second baseman. Even with Neil Walker aboard. Tries to lay down a bunt. It's a pretty good one. He's got great speed. The throw to first, not in time. Well, Tyler Wade showing his versatility. Drops down a bunt. And believe me, that was not the best bunt. He still beat it out. Yeah, just to show you the speed that Wade has. I think that's what appeals to Aaron Boone is the skill set, defense and speed. Ability to make things happen and that's not a bad thing to have on the roster especially when you have big home run hitters who can strike out a lot. When you think about a guy with that kind of skill set at the bottom of the order can offset some losing streaks or mm -hmm. some stretches you go through where you have a hard time putting the ball in play. And he can steal a bag. Back to the top of the order and Brett Gardner who is 0 for 2 tonight. Wade's not going and the pitch is high and away for ball one. With two outs, you got to figure that uh, maybe Mr. Wade will be taking off for second base. Here's a test for Bobby Wilson, the catcher. You know, he's trying to make this team. Can he throw Wade out if he decides to go? You can see the guard on the wrist that uh, was injured the other day. Good lead over at first base for Wade. There he goes. The pitch is high. The throw to second is in time. They got him. Quick tag by Petit, and Wade is thrown out. And that will end it for the Yankees here in the fifth inning. They picked up a couple of hits, but no runs. It's on to the sixth, and it's still a two to one game. Telecast is presented by the authority of the New York Yankees. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. We move to the sixth inning. New pitcher for the Yankees, Domingo Herman, who's been very impressive this spring. And the first pitch to Kepler is fouled back off the screen. Ten strikeouts in seven and two thirds innings. Maybe a few too many walks with four, but he's got impressive stuff. Good arm. Ball hit on the ground to second for Wade. A Sunday hop a day late, and he's thrown out. One down. <laughs> So Ramon gets the first hitter and now he will face uh, the big first baseman and I mean big David if you're in a strange town and you're walking around in places you're not sure where you're going you want to have this guy with you Kenny's Vargas 6'5 290 pounds. It looks like he's a little trimmer from last year. <laughs> Maybe I'm at 285. <laughs> Swing at a pitch of the dirt and strike one in batting practice he hit one over the batter's eye in center field. That is a long way into the night right now. The 0 1 pitch. A little chopper off the end of the bat. And he's in the hole. No balls and two strikes. Uh, Domingo Herman, a wiry body type on the mound and a nice loose arm, 95 miles an hour with the fastball. Pitch is foul, but almost like effortless power. Another 95 mile an hour fastball in on the hands of Vargas. Mm. Really good change up off of that fastball that he is gaining confidence in and will throw at any time. Vargas tonight is struck out, grounded out. And he hits one high in the air to right center field. Drifting back is McKinney, and he'll make the catch for out number two. That will go down as a just missed. Got underneath it, and there are two outs. That ball was up there for a while. You talk about a round baseball and a round bat and sometimes it's just a fraction of an inch because yeah. that is all over the sweet spot of the bat. But what what would you say maybe not just just a, an eighth of an inch yes. if that from 
being on Dale Mabry Highway instead of in the center fielder's glove. Here's Robbie Grossman, who's had a good night. He's two for two. He'll be smiling on the way back to uh, Fort Myers on the bus. Yankee pitchers have retired eight in a row. That pitch is in there for a strike, and it's 0 and 2. And also 13 of the last 14 batters. The 0 2 pitch. Call strike three. Grossman caught looking. Herman has a strong inning. Twins go in order. Yankees coming up. Brought to you in part by Jaguar, the art of performance. To learn more about the Jaguar XE, visit JaguarUSA.com. By BP, seize the day and every mile with BP. Every day, brighter. And by your local Kia dealers. Visit KiaDealers.com to learn more. That is uh, Dale Mabry, thoroughfare that runs uh, north and south just outside of the right field fence. Here at Steinbrenner Field. And a new pitcher for the Minnesota Twins, Alberto Mejia. And this will be his fourth appearance of the spring. Ten hits in eight innings. And two and two with walks and strikeouts. Big left-hander on the mound. Yankees are down by a run as we go to the sixth inning. And it'll be the top of the order. Brett Gardner, followed by Giancarlo Stanton and Greg Bird. And there's a new catcher in the ball game for the Minnesota Twins. Williams Estradillo doing the catching. So a new battery for Minnesota as we go to the sixth inning. And the first pitch to Gardner hits the outside corner for a call strike. Gardner working on an 0 for 2 night. Struck out looking and fouled out to the catcher. Hall, strike two, 0 and 2. See, Bahia actually for the Twins last year got 21 starts, part of the rotation. Probably more looking at a bullpen spot this year. Ball is fouled off by Gardner. He'll keep the at bat going, but he's in the hole. No balls and two strikes. There's the new catcher, Astadillo. He uh, casts a big shadow out there on the mound. The 0 2 pitch once again, and Gardner hits it in the inner center field for Buxton. And lazily, he moves over towards left center, makes the catch for out number one. How does Mejia go there? 6 1? 6 3. 195 when he's 24 years old. Might have been 195 when he was 18. But. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, that's what big league mill money will do to you. Here's Stanton looking for his first hit of the night. He's uh, grounded out, fouled out. Takes one upstairs for ball one. Stanton hit a rocket out of here against the Mets. Matt Harvey. About the same area where Austin hit his home run tonight. Looked like a little slider over the top, and it's a ball and a strike. On the Yankee left fielder. Sweet a miss. Looked like a well, fastball, and it's one and two. And we were talking earlier this spring, Stanton was having problems with the sun and the wind out in the left field here at Steinbrenner Field. Of course, it can be very difficult during spring training for infielders and outfielders on pop ups and fly balls. Next pitch is outside two and two. But I think one thing you have to remember, David, is that during his career in Miami, most of the time they played down there, the roof was closed. So he's playing at least half his games in a dome stadium. And he wasn't subjected. To the wind and the sun is maybe he was on the road. And plus getting used to a new position in left field as opposed to playing right field for Miami. 
Pitches hit hard. Knocked down by the third base and by bar. The throw is low, and Stanton beats it out for a base hit. Well, we think it's a hit. That was a rocket that Ibar couldn't handle. Wow. I don't know if I want to get in front of this one. <laughs> and that's why they do call it the hot corner. And if you're going to play third Ooh. base with Stanton up, you better play deep. And he is, but still on him in a hurry. Really pretty good play to knock that down and even. You know what? I thought he was out on the play. No, he. Yeah, who knows? We won't have a replay, that's for sure. Here's Greg Bird looking for his first hit and looking for his first extra base hit of the spring. Tried to check his swing, but he goes around and it's strike. The throw to first is in time to pick off the pinch runner, and that is Shane Robinson. So Astrodillo makes his presence known by picking off the pinch runner at first base. Wow, first of all, the phone booth hack from Bird. Wow. And Robinson just, wow, caught flat footed. Oh, caught napping. That's embarrassing. Here's another look. He's looking at the pitcher, and the throw is coming from the catcher. Oh, and two on Bird. Ball is hitting the air to left field. Robbie Grossman coming on, still coming on, and the ball falls in. Wow, maybe some miscommunication between Petit and Grossman, but that ball is going to fall in for a base hit. Bird will take it. Well, off the bat, you could see that this was going to be a tough play, and Grossman looking for help right there at the last minute. It's not going to get it. Uh, he didn't say I got it. <laughs> he thought about it. So the inning continues. And the pitch to Drury is over the outside corner for a call strike. By the way, Stanton reached on an E5. So that's a tough way to get an error for the third baseman. Eric Ibar, who was almost taken in the left field by that hot shot. Drury fouls it off, and it's no balls and two strikes. Another reminder we'll be back here tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock as the Yankees take on the Detroit Tigers on yes. I believe that's the third time we've had the Tigers on yes. We've just about seen all of their players. CC Sabathia gets the start for the Yankees. Jordan Zimmerman, the veteran right hander, will go for the Tigers. Ball is popped up. Short center field. Going back is Gordon, the second baseman. He turns, makes the catch, and that'll do it for the Yankees here in the fifth. They have a hit, but nothing else. On to the seventh. 2 1 Twins. Game tickets for the 2018 season at Yankee Stadium are now on sale at Yankees.com or by calling Ticketmaster. The season features some great games against the best of the American League and some terrific interleague matchups versus the National League East. Also, don't miss the 72nd annual Old Timers Day on Sunday, June 17th, and the 20th. That's right, 20th anniversary celebration of the 1998 World Championship team. Saturday, that's Saturday, August the 18th. Log on to Yankees.com tonight. For all the information. On our Ford scoreboard, two to one Minnesota. Domingo Herman is still in there. And he faces uh, Bobby Wilson. No, make that uh, Astradillo, the catcher, who's now in there for Wilson. Wilson was one for two with a two run homer that has given the Twins the lead. His pitch is fouled off at the plate. And the count is evened up at the ball and a strike. Yankees have made some changes. You saw Shane Robinson go in as a pinch runner, not for long, against a, for Giancarlo Stanton. He's in left field now. Esteban Florial. 
the speedy Florial in center field, taking over for Gardner. His pitch is lined to center. Florial using that speed. He's there and makes the catch for one out. Herman is now retired four in a row. Domingo Herman squarely in the conversation for one of your first replacements uh -huh. as far as for a rotation spot can relieve as well. Was seven and two last year in Scranton with a two point eight three ERA. Here's Gordon takes a pitch for a strike now if I'm not mistaken. Herman pitched over in Port St. Lucie against the Mets and several of the Met writers were impressed by him and thinking and they stated that if the Yankees want to leave him behind they'll take him. <laughs> that pitch is swung on and missed and it's 0 2. He's, he's the kind of talent that could be cracking a lot of major league rotations right now and you see the numbers there between double A and triple A and of course major leagues as well. Very solid numbers across the board. 0 2 pitch is upstairs for a ball. Gordon tonight is one for two. He is single and grounded to second. Brother of D. Son of Tom. It's this one to center field. Florial, he can't get this one. It's going to fall in there for a base hit. So Gordon has a two hit night. And on the sliding scale of uh, hitting, one hit is okay. Two is good. Three is very good. Four is a great night. Five hits in a game. That's Hall of Fame quality right there. So Gordon's at first with one down. Gregorio Petit, who drew a walk in the second and struck out in the fourth. So he's looking for contact. Throw over the first to check on Gordon, who's back safely. Kenny, you ever have five hits in a game? I, I don't think so. I, I think I would have remembered if I did. No, I don't think so. I've had four, but never five. I usually walk that fifth. <laughs> Gordon with a good lead at first. Pitch to the plate. There's contact. Grounded to short and by Torres and into left field. That ball kind of played him. Couldn't come up with the tough in between hop. And we'll see how that is scored as Petit reaches safely. You can see Torres trying to back up to get an angle on it, and it just scoots on by. Playing at double play depth. It has been scored as an error for Torres. E6. Two on and one out. And it'll bring up the DH, Jordan Pachenko. Like Petit, he's looking for contact. He is 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. He'll take one a little bit low for ball one. Yeah, no five hit games, David. They just looked it up in the truck. 16 four hit games, though. Yeah, that'll work. That's about one a year. Ooh, chopper foul. He got a piece of Austin Romine and he's shaken up. Well, you can hear it uh, hit off of that shin guard. And uh, he's going to limp around a little bit. Stevie Donahue, the head athletic trainer for the Yankees, is going to come out and check on the Yankee catcher, uh, along with manager Aaron Boone. Yep, that's a tough job. Romine having an excellent spring. We mentioned that. Uh, his bat has been on fire. Here's another look. Look like right off the top of the kneecap. What did catchers do before the, the invention of shin guards? You can always tell the catcher day at the beach, huh? <laughs> oh, that doesn't even look good. You know, Romine down on one knee kind of left himself exposed there a bit trying to give a good target down for Herman. Trying to get a ground ball again and possible double play to get out of the inning. Ball is fouled back to the screen by Pacheco and it's a ball and two strikes. You know, the Yankees acquired Herman. You know it's got to go back to 2014 and you remember the big Nathan Avaldi trade. Yeah. 
December 19th when the Yankees uh, sent David Phelps and Martin Prado to the Marlins for Nathan Avaldi and Garrett Jones and oh yeah young kid named Domingo Herman who last man standing. The one two pitch. This is the inside corner two and two Avaldi now back after a second Tommy John surgery uh, pitching for the Rays. And I believe he started against the Yankees once this spring and pitched very well. Yes, and uh, he, he's knocking down the door of a, another comeback from another elbow surgery. Of course, we mentioned Michael Pineda in Twins camp trying to recover from his own surgery. Ball hit on the ground to third. Nice scoop by Drury, the second for one on the first, and there's your double play. Around the horn, double play is started by Brandon Drury. Nicely turned by Wade in the middle. And we're going to stay right here for the very patriotic song, God Bless America. We're in the middle of the seventh, and the Twins lead the Yankees 2-1. to one. Yankees would like to recognize all the men and women of our armed forces. So, please direct your attention to the Yankees' first base dugout. And welcome, United States Air Force Airman First Class Nelson Rivera. Airman First Class Rivera is stationed at McDill Air Force Base with the 927th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron and is responsible for the refueling of KC-135s in support of the United States Navy's F-18s and preparation for future deployment. Airman First Class Rivera is also a native New Yorker from the Bronx. Let's have a warm round of applause for him and all of our brave men and women for the sacrifices they make each day for our country. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and remove your caps and join in Kate Smith's rendition of God Bless America. Minnesota over the Yankees as we head to the bottom of the seven a little while ago our Jack Curry was outside of the Yankee clubhouse and he spoke to Masahiro Tanaka Masahiro you end up pitching four innings allowing two runs striking out six how would you evaluate your performance. え、ま、オープン戦はあの、アトランタ投げてから2試合目だったんですけど、え、ま、順調に良くなってこうステップアップできてると思います。あ、I how did you think your fastball command was in this outing? やっぱりそのストレートのね、コマンド、制球がどうであるかっていうところがちょっと今日は見てみたいっていうことでおっしゃってみたいですけれども、ご自身の中で今日ストレートに関してはどのような感触だったでしょうか。え、まだ多少こ
And also lots of swings and misses. Slider and splitter, did they both feel good? そうですね。今日は1番はベストボールはスライダーだったと思います。あの、まあでもスプリットも感触は良かったです。Yes, uh, both. Uh, I think both are getting getting there too. Um, I think the uh, the slider was a bit better today, uh, but uh, yeah, the split was was decent enough, I guess. And last question: You have about two and a half weeks before the season begins. What is left on your checklist of things you want to get done between now and then? Um, I think the number one thing is working on the mechanics, uh, just trying to get that sound mechanic and be really consistent. Um, so that's what I need to work on until opening day or when, until the season, when the season starts. Thanks very much, guys. Kenny and David, back to you in the booth. Thank you very much, Jack, and thank you for that interview with Masahiro Tanaka. Kind of eye-opening, as he, he mentioned the fact that a uh, little bit better fastball command tonight. He did have six strikeouts, all swinging, and looked much more effective than he did in his first down. Well, he was sharp in the first inning, obviously had the, the long second inning, but certainly rebounded. I thought his splitter was really sharp down, and, and slider for that matter. As Jack Curry mentioned, he had a lot of swing and misses tonight. Mm -hmm. Aaron Boone mentioned that he thought from down there his fastball was crisp and was popping. Pinch runner is uh, Ryan McBroom at first place. He takes over for Tyler Austin. At the plate is Billy McKinney, and he's down on the count. No balls and two strikes. And that pitch is over the inside corner for call strike three. McKinney is caught looking, and he's over three on the night. Little delayed call there, and McKinney's caught off guard. And, and we're going to have a pinch hitter. Remember that uh, Austin Romine took that foul ball off the kneecap. Eric Kratz, veteran catcher, he's had 11 at bats this spring and four hits. A couple of runs batted in, swings and misses on a changeup, and it's strike one. So Kratz will be taking over for Romine. Uh, just a reminder, folks, that uh, Jack Curry will be joining us in the top half of the next inning. And of course Jack all has all the information you need to know about what's going on in camp. You know I was amazed at how quickly Jack got up here at, at, after talking to Masahiro Tanaka. Yeah why wait he's here now. Yeah. So let's just bring him on in. You know we all work with flash but this might be the new flash. There's a secret elevator guys yeah. I'll have to tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> a ball and a strike on Kratz. Big left-hander deals, and it's high and away for a ball. Well, Jack is here now. What? Let's see, we'll go to the first question we have. What did uh, Brian Cashman have to say about uh, signing Neil Walker today, Jack? Very interesting, Kenny. He uh -huh. talked about how the Yankees were interested in Walker. At the last trading deadline last July Walker was a guy that they thought about adding. They continued to have dialogue with him throughout the offseason and originally they thought he would be their solution at third base. They believed that even though he's played second for the bulk of his career that he's a guy who could handle third. They had more traction on the Drury trade the three team trade so they end up getting Drury but they continued to maintain dialogue with Walker we see his numbers there across the last four seasons and what's interesting about this Kenny is I asked Walker did you think the door had closed once Drury became a Yankee he said he thought it had fly ball to right field and Kepler has it for the gap and there's two down now for the Yankees here in the seventh I noticed that what Walker signed today and he's here today what was he in the neighborhood or signed today here today remember he went to that camp for the jobless I guess you would call it the free agents who don't uh -huh. have a home yet so he was in the Florida area said he got about a dozen at bats playing games down there but yeah. what's interesting guys is Brian Cashman and Aaron Boone and I heard your interview they're not handing him anything just yet yeah. he sort of has to be the guy who 
who jumps on the merry-go-round that's moving quickly without him. He's got two and a half weeks to get himself ready for opening day. So we probably won't see him in a minor league uh, in a spring training game. He'll probably go over to the minor league complex to get more at bats yeah. to try and accelerate getting himself ready for the season. Yeah in those games Jack they can send you up to the plate as many times as they want. Here's Ronald Torres. It's a high fly ball to right field. Jack Curry will be back with us in the uh, top half of the eighth inning at the end of seven here. It is two to one the Twins are leading the Yankees. On to the top of the eighth inning Byron Buxton takes a pitch from Domingo Herman who is still in there for the Yankees in his third inning of work. Uh, Jack Curry had joined us in the last half of the seventh remains here in the eighth inning Ken Singleton along with David Cohn and Jack Curry. Good breaking ball did he go. Yeah he did. Laz Diaz with the call and it's 0 and 2. And Jack we were talking about the Neil Walker and I guess we have to talk about players like Tyler Wade Adam Lynn where do they all fit into the picture as we get down to the last uh, two and a half weeks. So I'm here for less than five minutes and suddenly I got to do Brian Cashman's job. Yeah huh? yeah <laughs> it's, you know you're good at that stuff. It's uh, it's falls under the heading Kenny I think of one of those good problems to have and off air we were just talking about that the roster construction. Uh -huh. So if you have 12 pitchers and let's say they go with 12 pitchers then you have your eight starters plus a DH that gets you to 21. You're talking about a four man bench. Yeah. Let's just assume everyone's healthy. Ellsbury's trying to work his way back. But if everyone's healthy, I mean, Austin Romine is on your bench. Uh, Ellsbury's on your bench, or an extra outfielder is on your bench. That leaves two spots. Uh -huh. And that guy right there that we're showing right now, I think he's on the team. I think Wade has made the team in some form. So then who gets that final spot? Is it another? Utility type like a Torres or do he and Wade cancel each other out and as David brought up a guy like Adam Lind a corner player yeah. becomes your extra bench guy. And Lind you know maybe not the need for pinch hitting in the American League as you have in the National League but he was very solid in that role uh, with the Nationals. Kenny 301 plate appearances 14 home runs with the Nationals but this is a very legitimate question to ask as we see the strikeout. Where do those 301 plate appearances come if you are on the Yankees. Uh -huh. I don't know that his role would be as vast here as yeah. it was for the Nationals. Yeah I, I think if you're a role player or a bench player you're best suited for the National League you get used much more often as you can see with the Nationals last year 303 14 home runs 59 runs batted in and look at those numbers as a pinch hitter. Ground ball towards the middle. Wade gets a high hop. He throws on the first, and that is out number two here in the eighth inning. Yeah, it becomes an interesting problem yeah. or issue to try and solve. I mean, a guy like Danny Espinosa came to camp thinking that maybe he could impress the Yankees enough yeah. to latch on to a roster spot if the kids didn't work out. Well, he was sent packing today when yeah. they got Neil Walker because it became obvious there was no room for him, and Cashman said, Listen, I wanted to give him a chance. Maybe he could. Get a job with somebody else. Uh -huh. Here's Max Kepler, and he is drilled by the pitch, and he's at the first base. So with two outs, Kepler is on, and uh, it's a hard way to get on base. And they're going to come out and check on him as he is uh, strolling, uh, taking his time getting down to first base. Get another look. Slider, at the top of the foot. You know, Jack and David, we're, we're talking about, ooh, man, that doesn't even look good. That doesn't feel good. But we're going to have a pinch runner for Kepler as uh, he might get some ice on that foot and keep it on there all the way back to Fort Myers. Hmm. But, you know, I always thought it was tough for managers and general managers to make calls at the end of spring training as to who's going to be on the team and tell people they're not going to be on the team. That, that, that can't be a fun day. It's a first. It's a first for Aaron Boone too. Yeah. He never had to do that. And any rookie manager, obviously. Here's Kenny. Kenny's Vargas, who is 0 for 3, and he takes a pitch for a strike. It is so difficult that playing for Earl Weaver, he wouldn't do it. He made the general manager do it. Wait a second. Tough guy, Earl Weaver, who would get in your uh, face in the dugout. Yeah, but those are guys on the team. <laughs> 
So the 26th man, the guy he was sending out the, to the minors, he the, didn't have the. Uh, uh, it was the general manager. Interesting. Who, because Earl thought that they might hold it against him and it wouldn't play hard if they came back. <laughs> well, Kenny, we've thrown a lot of names around, uh -huh. and one name we didn't even really mention is the guy who has this titanic home run tonight and is having a good spring is oh. Tyler Austin because you you try to do the math and you try to figure out a roster construction as yeah. to how he's squeezing his way onto the team and I think it's going to be very very difficult. Yeah that was his third home run of the spring and all three of them have been very impressive. He had to walk off homer against the Braves hit a long home run in the afternoon that the Yankees hit five home runs against the Phillies in Clearwater he hit one of them. It's a difficult time and an exciting time for general managers because there's so much surplus value out there in the free agency market right now that it, yeah. it's too tempting to get a guy like Neil Walker for four and a half million dollars or Adam Lind on a minor league contract. Blazing fastball strikes out Vargas. Jack's going to stay. We keep Jack with us. On to the bottom of the eighth. Now stick around for the Yankees access. Aaron Judge get an exclusive behind the scenes look at the new face of baseball. That's immediately after the game and it's right here on yes. You see how uh, the Judge prepared for the season and, and Jack that must have been uh, quite a day of interviews. You went all the way to California for that one didn't you? Very revealing day interesting uh -huh. day to spend some time with Aaron and his parents and and watch him prepare for the season. I've said this a couple times before but. If you like the science of hitting and want to know what a hitter is thinking, check out that show. Tyler Wade is thrown out at first by the new pitcher, Tyler Kindley. So one up and one down here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And Esteban Florial will come to the plate for the first time tonight. I just want to see this guy hit a ball in the gap. He's got three triples this spring. Twins have made uh, several changes. And we'll try to uh, catch you up on them. He's hitting even 300, 6 for 20. Three of those hits have been triples. Yankees think a lot of this young man, Jack. As they should. Uh -huh. You talk about Tyler Wade and, and, and his speed. Well, as you just mentioned, Floreal, so many different elements that he brings as a player. And we can all see what he does on the field. But the first press conference, or I wouldn't even call it a press conference, but the first time he met with the media this spring for a kid who has just played in the low levels of the minor leagues, handled himself as, as professionally as polished as, as I've seen a young player ever handle himself. Ball and a strike. What do you think? Double A? Is he ticketed for double A? Maybe Trenton this year in center field? And you know, that, that's something that if you're going to dream on, that's kind of the. What scouts talk about nowadays dreaming on on prospects two to three years away from being the center fielder in, at Yankee Stadium if not sooner. Showing a good eye there takes a pitch for a ball and it's two and one. Here we go six foot 195. Born in Dominican Republic. Signed by the Yankees as an international free agent. And ranked the number two Yankee prospect. He takes pitch inside for ball three, three and one. The Yankees are down by a run here in the bottom of the eighth inning. When they acquired Sonny Gray last year, the A's pestered Brian Cashman for Florial, and that was one player. Well, there were a few players they wouldn't include, but he was one of the players they definitely did not want to include. He's got to count his way, three and one. Let's see what happens on this pitch. It's ball four. And a speedy Floreal is headed to first base. So one out and one on for the Yankees. They're down by a run here in the eighth inning. Now, Jack, you've been in camp for a few weeks here. Just your thoughts on the way things are going for the Yankees this spring. They got a decent record, but that doesn't always tell what's going on in spring training. I was talking to a couple members of the print media. I always migrate back sometimes to my roots and. A lot of people were just talking about how smooth this camp has run for the Yankees. No major injuries. I know Ellsbury and Frazier are, are guys that are out right now, but no major injuries. The guys you would expect to perform well have performed well. Yes, Greg Bird's numbers aren't where you would want them to be. I know Judge and Stanton just got their first home runs over the weekend, but this team is carrying itself like a team that knows 
greatness could be in front of it and just a very relaxed vibe and I think a lot of that stems from Boone and a lot of that stems from they know what they accomplished last year and in order to exceed what they did last year got to get to the World Series get to the World Series and win it and and you see guys carrying themselves in that way. You know another thing we, we've seen the thought put out there that Aaron Judge might actually lead off uh, depending on who the Yankees are facing that day. That pitch goes all the way back to the screen and Floreal will scamper down to second. He has a sprinter stride long strides covers a lot of ground. That would be a wild pitch. I want to get your thoughts on that you and David about the judge leading off. Well on base percentage would tell you that yes sure you uh -huh. could do that and remember for all the folks who might be screaming out there right now he's the leadoff batter once mm -hmm. he's the leadoff batter guaranteed to be one time in the game so I think Boone said that it's something he has thought about or tinkered with but he said early in camp that the lineup's going to be fluid all year mm -hmm. they're going to end up having I don't know 90 or 100 different lineups who knows based on the pitchers and are you moving one guy two, three, three, four? So the idea that Judge could end up leading off occasionally, I don't find it so outlandish. And another hitter who might fit into the leadoff role, that pitch is knocked down by the catcher. You know, the, the only problem with that as a long term solution is that generally speaking, even though Jax is correct, the leadoff hitter only leads off once a uh -huh. game, but over the course of a season, the leadoff batter generally bats with nobody on base about one fifth of the time. Yeah. And th that's a th that's tough to swallow with a guy like Aaron Judge who's potentially a 50 home run guy. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm, I'm a proponent of getting your best hitters towards the top of the order and getting them as many at bats as you can. But uh, it, it's that's a hard pill to swallow. Swing and a miss by Shane Robinson. Florial's at second with one out. Another hitter who, you know, Gardner's going to be the leadoff hitter more, more often than not. But another hitter who's kind of shown in the leadoff spot has been Aaron Hicks. He's actually walked seven times this spring. And I think that's one of the reasons why last year Joe Girardi batted him up in the order from time to time in the second spot. Hicks's plate discipline from 16 to 17 was night and day. It's what helped make him a much more productive player. The ability to just get some walks and on cue. There's a walk right there and it's a big part of your game if you can supplement a nice batting average with a bunch of walks and obviously that's why a guy like Judge is, is over 400 in his on base percentage. Well Kenley's walked a couple of this inning and he's going to get a visit, visit from the uh, pitching coach Garvin Alston the new pitching coach for the Minnesota Twins. Jack I had mentioned earlier that uh, Alston's from my hometown Mount Vernon New York. Did you guys get a chance to chat before the game? No, because they came late and I was already, uh, you know, doing my thing. But uh, you know, I just want to congratulate There's more than one baseball player from Mount Vernon. And what what was the uh, Mount Vernon? What's the nickname? What's the, uh, the the Mount Vernon Knights? Mount Vernon Knights. Yeah, and that applied to uh, the school and Mount Vernon. <laughs> so good luck to Garvin Alston this year. He's on the phone to the bullpen. Two on and one out. Back to back walks and to bring up Bird. Went a base hit. Ball fell in in left field. Chance to tie up the ball game. It's a high fly ball, deep center field. Going back is Ramsey. The wind blowing in in that direction. He'll make the catch. Floreal headed for third and he'll beat the throw. There's that speed we were talking about. There's a lot of runners who would not attempt to advance to third base. And you better be sure because you don't want to make the third out at third base obviously in this situation down by one run but he was sure you can see there's the stride that Kenny was talking about. And he covers ground. Here's Yankee third baseman Brandon Drury who's going all the way in tonight's game he had a single his first time up one for three. Yankees with the tying run at third the go ahead run at first. With two down here in the eighth. Kinley deals, and it's in there for a strike. Now, Jack, we understand 
you had a chance to talk to Drury before the game. How did that conversation go? I did, and Kenny, you're struck by his intensity. This is a guy who has a lot of energy and a lot of high expectations for himself, and he talked about feeling acclimated now. It's been about three weeks since he arrived, and in the three-team trade, it was, we see a, another stolen base. Yep, Robinson takes off for second. No throw. And now the tie, uh, the go-ahead runs in scoring position. But he also talked about some of the changes he's made in his swing, which were prompted by conversations with J.D. Martinez, his former Diamondback teammate, who is now obviously a foe in the AL East with the Red Sox, but just wanting to launch the ball more, wanting to get the ball in the air. And the Yankees are also very pleased with him because of his ability to hit the ball the opposite way. They think Yankee Stadium is going to play very well to his swing. Yeah, he started a nice double play at third base tonight, too, on a hot shot. He's down on the count 0 and 2. That pitch knocked down by Astradillo. At the winter meetings, Kenny, we're covering the Yankees and we're asking Brian Cash in about 2018. And there's talk about rookies at second base and third base. And uh -huh. now it's not looking like it's going to be that. And for all the Yankee fans who love the Yankees and their prospects, it doesn't mean they're giving up on a Glaber Torres. It doesn't mean they're giving up on a Miguel and Duhar. It just means the way this team is constructed right now, when you've got reliable options, as, as Coney talked about, you can get a Drury, you can get a guy like Walker. You, you make those moves and, and you let the younger players get their feet under them a little more and get themselves ready to contribute and probably even contribute this year. 0-1-2 pitch is high, ball two. I think one thing working against Torres is the fact he only played 55 games last year was that with the uh, Tommy John surgery on his non-throwing arm. And uh, he's not having the spring that he had last year when he hit almost 500. Well, Tommy John surgery is no joke. I mean, even uh -huh. if you're an infielder and it's your non-throwing arm, it's still major surgery. And it's it's something that, you know, the you, you probably deserves a little protection. Little chopper in front of the plate. Astrodillo comes up with it, throws the first, and the Yankees going to leave two men on here in the eighth inning. Want to thank Jack Curry for being with us tonight. We'll be hearing from him all year long. Your local Chevy dealers, visit ChevyOffers.com. And you see, it's going to be Masahiro Tanaka. He had a good slider and a good splitter tonight. Struggled a little bit in the second inning, but he felt good about it. Aaron Boone, his manager, said he looked good from the field level. Certainly on track. Pitch count got up past 50. Certainly also good sliders, good splitters. All in all, Masahiro Tanaka, the Chevy plays of the game. New pitcher for the Yankees here in the top of the ninth. It's going to be the hard-throwing Tommy Canely. And this is what Tommy has done in spring training. 286, three strikeouts and an inning and two thirds, a couple of walks. Canley's not the uh, only change the Yankees have had here in the top of the night. Edwin Corsino was hitting for the uh, Minnesota Twins. He'll lead it off. His first hit bat of the game. He takes a pitch from Canley in there for a call strike. Edgar. Corsino. That's what he did last year in the minors. Good batting average at 292. Takes another pitch just outside for a ball. Jace Peterson has taken over at second base for the Yankees. And Avellino has taken over at third. This ball is fouled off by Corsino. Kind of a breakout year last year for Tommy Canley, both with the White Sox and then, of course, Yankee fans remember down the stretch. And yeah. 69 games he appeared in last year with a 2.59 ERA overall. Ball is fouled and it got a piece of the hitter, Corsino. Canley really emerged too as a strikeout pitcher. 96 strikeouts and just. 
62 and two thirds innings collectively between the White Sox and Yankees. That is blowing him away. Mid to upper 90s fastball and really I think his second best pitch is a, is his changeup. He's kind of got a power changeup. Third pitch a slider to go with it. Only 17 walks to go against those 96 strikeouts last year. Swing and a miss strike three. Looks like a good changeup to pick up the strikeout. So one up and one down here in the top of the ninth inning. This is why you call it a power changeup. It's 90 miles an hour. But off of mid to upper 90s, it works. Astradio, the catcher, the hitter, he's been up one time and he flew out to center field. Ball is lying foul at its own two. We just got news that uh, Hall of Famer and former Yankee Reggie Jackson was injured in a fall today while he was out walking and hurt his knee and he's going to undergo surgery tomorrow. So we certainly want to uh, wish Mr. October a quick recovery and see him out at the ballpark soon. Estradillo has himself a base hit. He's one for two. So he's on with one out. So see you soon, Reggie. Good luck with the surgery tomorrow. And that'll bring up the second baseman, Sean Miller. And I'm sure that's the uh, sentiments of all you Yankee fans out there. All the thrills that uh, Reggie provided in a Yankee uniform. You don't get a month named after you for nothing. You know, he's been a fixture in the organization uh -huh. since his play days here at spring training and throughout the season. So one out one on for Sean Miller his first at bat and he'll take a pitch for a call strike. Miller took over at second base. For Nick Gordon. You know, I mentioned Tommy Canley's breakout season last year and the big trade last year with the White Sox and David Robertson. You can dream on that uh -huh. having a full year of Tommy Canley and David Robertson this year in that bullpen. Little chopper going to be a tough play. Canley bounces off the mound has time throws the first a nice scoop by McBroom and that is out number two. So Miller thrown out. And uh, by Canley, but it was the first baseman McBroom who actually made the play. And a heck of a play on both ends. Canley bouncing off the mound, and that's not an easy scoop. Canley quick release, but a hard one hopper and the stretch and the pick from McBroom. Nicely done. On the play, Estradillo moves down to second. That'll bring up Ryan Walker, the shortstop, for his first at bat. And that is high and away for ball one, 95 miles an hour. When you think about it, last year when the Yankees thought they had a shot, they went out and made that deal to bolster the bullpen. And it, it got to the point, it used to be, Dave, when I was playing, you wanted to get to the bullpen, get that starter out of there and get to the bullpen. Now, what do you want to see out of the Yankee bullpen? I, I don't think there's anybody you want to run up there and face. Well, legitimately four closers mm -hmm. with Chapman. Robertson could easily be a closer, has been a closer, very successful. Canley's got closer style stuff. Dellen Batances. Yeah. So the Yankees have four stoppers, all power guys, all strikeout type pitchers. 2 0 pitch to Walker and hits a slow roll of the third for Avellino. The throw is on the money. And the Twins are retired in the top of the ninth. They pick up a hit, nothing else. Can the Yankees rally in the bottom of the ninth? We'll see. Drive of the game. And driven it was. Tyler Austin steps up against former Yankee Phil Hughes. Looked like something off speed on the inner half, and he just belts it to deep right center field. Tyler Austin's third home run on the, on the spring is the Land Rover drive of the game. 
And that was definitely touched off. Twins have a new pitcher in the game. Trying to close this one out is Gabriel Moya. And this will be his fifth appearance of the spring. And uh, so far, he's done a pretty good job for Minnesota. Hadn't walked a batter. Five strikeouts in five innings. He will face uh, McBroom, McKinney, and Kratz for the Yankees here in the ninth. Where the Twins have really increased their depth. Some of the starters they had last year can be candidates for the bullpen. All the additions, they really do have a, a beefed up roster and should be interesting in the American League Central. You know, with three of those teams kind of in the rebuild mode, it almost, it's them in Cleveland. The Twins in their front office at the top of the list, at or near the top of, of offseason achievements. Here's McBroom. He does have a home run this spring, and he'll swing and miss, strike one. Bottom of the ninth inning, the Yankees are down two to one. Home runs have provided the margin in this game. A two run shot for Bobby Wilson of the Twins, and a solo shot for Tyler Austin of the Yankees. And that's all the scoring. It's two to one. Late on a fastball, and the count is 0 2. One more reminder about tomorrow's game, 1 o'clock. David and I will be back here. Just tune in to Yes, and you'll see the Yankees and the Detroit Tigers. Outside and just one and two. We mentioned that CC Sabathia, the veteran, will be on the mound for the Yankees and another veteran going for the Tigers, Jordan Zimmerman. And CC's looked great this spring. Oh, yeah. I thought he was in midseason form in his first outing that we saw on Yes. That was against the, the Phillies. A little chop of foul at the home plate area. Still one and two. Just seems like Sabathia, who's been, you know, one of the greatest pitchers of his generation, is just comfortable in his own skin now. He, he knows his formula. He's made the complete transition from power pitcher to more of a finesse style of a pitcher. 237 career wins. One two pitch swung on in, missed strike three. McBroom chased the high fastball. One down for the Yankees here in the ninth inning. Every weekday afternoon, catch the Michael K. Show on Yes and get in-depth opinions and analysis of New York's most talked about teams. Plus an entertaining twist on the latest headlines from around the sports world. That's weekdays at 3 right here on Yes. Here's Billy McKinney. He's gone all the way tonight. He's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Breaking ball, swung on in, missed strike one. Mitch McKinney has five hits this spring, four of them are home runs. Moya with that herky jerky delivery, misses high and away, and it's a ball and a strike. Yeah, interesting mannerisms on the mound, Moya. Kind of reminds me, it has the same build of Al Rabowski. I was thinking the same thing, yes. That, that, that demeanor on the mound. The only thing he doesn't do is go behind the mound and slap the ball into the glove. Like Rabowski did years ago. The 1 1 pitch is low ball, too. In fact, it earned of Rabowski the nickname the Mad Hungarian. It's one of the great all time characters, uh -huh. without a doubt. And he's been a fixture on the St. Louis Cardinal broadcast for years. The 2 1 pitch. Look at it's inside. Ball three, three and one. Almost caught a piece of McKinney. Well, McKinney, he's got the power. Let's see if he gets something to his liking here on a 3 1 pitch. Put your A swing on it.
That misses ball four and the tying run is aboard. Moya went to a slider and missed. And that'll bring up Eric Kratz. Kratz with his first at bat. He took over for Austin Romine, and while Austin was in the game, he was one for three. Kratz, the veteran catcher who's been around the block. Is 0 for 1 tonight. It's a high towering pop up just beyond the mound. It's the shortstop Walker who makes the catch for out number two. We did have rain earlier today. We might have some more after that pop up. So two down and Ronald Torres will come to the plate. Torres has had a double grounded into a double play and fly out to right field. All right now. He represents the Yankees last hope. Time is called by home plate umpire Marty Foster. I think the catcher Astrodillo wanted to go over the signs again. One on two outs. Torres taking all the way in and takes it for a strike. Torres is at bats usually in quickly. He, he doesn't take too many. That's near the strike zone. He's going to hack at it. And, and usually put his bat on the ball somewhere. Yeah. Hard to strike out. Hard to walk. That's the ball one and one. Well Kenny now that I got a, a quick minute here before the game's over. Uh -huh. We know you made a big announcement today on social media. This yeah. is going to be your last year and uh -huh. you, you know Michael Kay's not going to let you go without a fight. <laughs> He's leading his own charge on social media. Uh, you know once it's out there you got to <laughs> stick to it. I'm a man of my word. It's been a great ride. This is my 22nd season with the Yankees here. This pitch is low for a ball wow. two and one. And I've enjoyed every minute of it, Cody. Well, it, it, like you said, it ain't over. Well, I'm, I'm going to personally enjoy every minute of yeah. every game we get together. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Twitter kind of blew up after they tweeted that this morning. 2 1 pitch, and it's hitting the air to center field. Coming on is Ramsey. He can't get it. The ball falls in for a base hit. And the Yankees now have the tying run at second. And the winning run at first base. So Torres bloops one in the left center field. And the game will continue. So Jace Peterson will get in that bat. He took over for Wade, who was two for three. So things getting interesting here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Torres does what Torres does and yep. puts it in play. Gives Peterson a shot here. The Twins outfield has moved up. In case there's a play at the plate. The Yankees are just one for seven with runners in scoring position tonight. Pitch to Peterson. Slider is low and away for ball one. What's left of the crowd here at Steinbrenner Field? The noise level has picked up. As the Yankees are trying to rally here in the bottom of the ninth. That's a call strike. One and one on Peterson. Another player who was brought into camp with a chance to uh, make the team. Moya is ready. In there for call strike two. Yankees down to their last strike. Peterson takes consecutive fastballs for call strikes. A one two pitch. That hung high. Two and two. 
Well, if you're Moya, you don't want the count to go to three balls and two strikes because the runners get a running start here. So he wants this to be the pitch of decision. On deck, the state on Florida. Here's the 2 2 pitch, and it's blooped in the left field, and it's going to be caught by the left fielder, Corsino. I mentioned the outfielders were playing up tight so they could have a, throw, a play at the plate, and that ball did not bloop in. The Twins go on to win this one by a score of 2 to 1. As the bid for a base hit by Peterson does not fall in. So it'll be a happy ride for the Twins back to. Fort Myers as they win this one two to one. For a second there, it looked like the Yankees had a chance to at least tie the ball game. Instead, the Twins come away with a two to one win. Very entertaining game here tonight. Good pitching on both sides. The home run ball provides the difference. Here are the totals, final totals for tonight's ball game. For Minnesota, two runs, six hits, and an error. For the Yankees, a run. Eight hits, they too made an error. Hughes is the winner. The save goes to Moya. Tanaka takes the loss. Austin had a solo home run for the Yankees. Tanaka, four innings, four hits, two runs, a walk, and six strikeouts. That'll do it from George M. Steinbrenner Field. Special thanks to producer Troy Benjamin, coordinating director John Moore, Mike Webb, Woody Fryman, and our executive producer is Mr. John J. Filippelli. Join us again tomorrow for Yankees baseball as the Bombers take on the Detroit Tigers at George M. Steinbrenner Field in Tampa, Florida. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. on the Yes Network. Once again, the final score, Minnesota 2 and the Yankees 1. For David Cohn and Jack Curry, I'm Ken Singleton saying, have a good one, everybody. So long.